Hey everyone, Loomis here, and I wanted to do, similar to the other bosses, a rough positioning guide for Slepnir because I know a lot of people are having trouble with the boss or, you know, they've heard that it's really, really hard and they're struggling to get to the next letter grade tier. Now, the nice thing is that, you know, outside of a couple RNG things, the positioning is actually super easy. And really the only two times RNG comes up is the first is... You know, you don't know how you're going to get vacuum sucked to him and, in, in like, where your layout's going to be. So you could have, you know, a bad uh, unit ordering around him. But that's, you know, it's marginal, whatever. Like, it, you, you, you can just deal with it. It's not too hard. The other one is getting hunted. Now, if you get your healer hunted four times in a row, yeah, that's pretty bad. But, you know, it's very easy to position Slepnir around, move him around, build a wall, and figure it out. So... I will show you guys how to do that in this video here. And to start, um, I, I'm starting he, at the preparation screen here because there's a specific mechanic that you need to know when you start this battle. So the way Slepnir targets is based on positioning that you do here. So Alti is in the first slot here, Iris 2, Lanford 3, Luna 4, and so on. And basically his target priority is going to go on the top left unit here so that's why i want ultimate here so if you're doing like a weiler or leon or hind tank put them in the top left corner and the other thing that i'd like to mention before we start actually moving is that uh and thanks to brindale for doing some testing and figuring this one out um because i had it incorrect i assumed that so we all know that you get 60 percent damage dealt decrease if you just stay at the spot and attack now, I assume that if you move, so we, if you move three squares, because you get damage increased by 20%, uh, you just get 0% damage, and it caps out there. Well, apparently, if you move four squares, you get a 20% damage boost. If you move five, it's 40. So that's something very important to consider as you DPS the boss, because you can use things like excitation to increase your move and do some other things to help just, you know, overall increase your DPS. So just some food for thought. So... To start off here, I always like I always like positioning Iris here because she can dolly on the spot and apply the her talent to everyone. And because I have a, a Karen on her, I can also proc the Karen to start. Now the next person I always like to move is my Lanford because I can now get him, him into a position where you can have his um sorry his aura apply to everyone around him because i have the three square here now the first attack here basically you just want to have your tank eat it now if you're if you have less health than max he's going to that that targeting priority will supersede going after the one in the top left corner here so you just want to make sure that if you have a unit with lower hp that he's going to get guarded otherwise slepnir will go for him and he has a four range so unless you are sitting outside the danger zone you are going to get hit so just something to watch out for there but not too big of a deal overall all right so we are just going to attack the boss All right. So one thing I'll also mention is that I do have spirit boots on my Altimuler, and this will become important later in the fight, um, and I will show you where. So Luna here has Wind Spiral, so she can only move three squares, so she will get her damage back to zero after the buff, and we can just sit. So because Leon had slightly less than max health, Altimuler will tank for him here. And this is what I mean by the suck here. So we don't have any control over where our units are going to end up. Now, in a perfect world, Iris and Lanford would be swapped here because then you could move Iris over here to the corner and then you'd have an open avenue for your units to go attack. Uh, however, we did not get that, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by moving Olivier over here and I'm going to use Excitation. because that's going to be able to heal myself enough up. Now, Leon can attack from the top here. 
And the nice thing about this turn, so this is the powerful attack that you have to watch out for. This is basically what I refer to as the run ending skill, because this does a crazy amount of damage, and it will it will focus on the unit yeah, the top left there. So basically, you know, you need to stack as much damage reduction as possible on whatever unit you want to tank this, and hopefully he lives. Because if your tank does not live through this, with some small exceptions, he, your run's done. Now, one thing that I I, I do uh, or I've suggested to people because I don't run him. But you can use Vargas, uh, his first life. If you let's say you're in a turn like in the mid 30s and you get stomped on, you can have Vargas sacrifice his first life. And if you can kill Slopnir before you get to the next stomp, you can then survive into the even phase and continue DPSing him. And you know if you have a full team at that point, you probably should be able to get through the even phase. So on my best run, that was that happened on phase seven for me. So I was able to survive a phase seven stomp and then. DPS phase 8, kill him again, and get into phase 9. Now, another way you can survive this is if you have a Liana and you bring a Sky Archer. So if you Sky Archer and have the Sky Archer just the only person in melee range to attack there, he can do that. So, you know, there are a few ways to mitigate that, but the, the safest way by far is to just have, a, uh, have your tank stack as much damage redux as possible, and... If you do that and your tank dies anyways, well, I'm sorry, that's just kind of the way it goes. The other thing you want to consider is that, you know, you want to use skills like Roaring Bomb to lower his damage dealt, and if you can lower attack down too. So I have like a Last Knight on my Ultimealer, so I have a few ways of mitigating the damage, but, you know, it's kind of up to you to figure out how to best do that. Alright, so, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my Iris down here. Because I have a Karen on my Iris, so I want her to move as early as possible, so we get the damage. Uh, whoops. So we get the damage increase. Um, but uh, the buff. So now that lets me be able to move Lanford up to the top here. He gets an attack in. Luna can move to the other side here. And get in four squares of movement and she can now move away and this is another reason why spear boots are great on ultimate ultimate because I can move over here get my two squares and now I can move wherever I want so I like being on the bottom here so I almost want to keep ultimate right there and as predicted he gets stomped on The other thing you have to watch out for on the later phase stomps there is that if he survives the stomp but does not have enough HP to survive the AoE, you're going to want to move around in a position to help him out there. So one thing that will help out is actually because Excitation gives the regeneration buff, that might be able to heal enough health for Ultimate Lord to survive that AoE. So just something to consider. Now this attack is the... Uh, the AoE, so you can't have any units within a two square radius, or he will basically OHKO AoE you. So we got great positioning this time because we had Iris on the outskirts, so we can move her outside the two squares and mass heal our team. Um, next, what I want to do is, and this is actually the one of the big reasons. Uh, there's two really big reasons why you bring Spear Boots on Altimeter. One is for this. So you can now attack him because he has zero movement due to the last stomp. However, because Spirit Boots do not care about, the Act again does not care about what your movement is, you can retreat two blocks, and now Altimeter is outside the range. So for the earlier rounds, I like to do this because I would rather have Lanford tank the hit because Lanford can't retreat, but he does more counter damage than Altimeter. So it is a win-win for all of us. So what I'm going to do now is I am just going to aim with Olivier to burn a round of cooldowns. And I want him to apply the damage reduction to my team. And we can stay here because he's outside of the two square range. Next, Leon can run around, get four squares of movement. Attack into Slepnir. And retreat out of the way. Luna can get only three squares of movement. But that's okay. Get her hit in. 
get out of the range. And then Lanford can get four squares of movement in as well. And attack. All right. And you can see here, so Lanford does okay damage back. Just slightly higher than Altamuller. But the reason you want to do that is because it lets Lanford attack on this phase, giving you extra DPS. Because otherwise, Lanford would just have to retreat out of the zone and he would not be able to do any damage that turn okay so now because slumpnir is at low enough health we can now focus on having him um so we we can focus on stunning him sorry so what i'm going to do to start here is i want to see i'm going to move iris down here and we are going to heal everyone up now, what I can do is I'm going to take Altamuller, and because he gets three squares of movement, I'm going to attack with him first. Now, the great thing about that is because I have the Spirit Boots on him as well, I can move him out of the way, leaving a, a good space open for Luna to get four squares of movement and Lanford to get two squares of movement. But I can also move Lanford up here to get four squares. However, I don't trust Olivier attacking without full HP. So we want to move Lanford first and regular attack. So now the boss is down and he is stunned. So we can just go for, uh, we can try to max our DPS on him on the stun phase here. And what I'm going to do is, even though that we're headed into a moving phase turn here, I'm, I want to have Luna have her attack as high as possible throughout the phase. So, um, we are going to Wind Spiral now rather than later. So we have her attack up at least parts of the moving phase, because even if Luna gets hunted, we have ways to mitigate that. So, now on the moving phase, he has no range counter, which is important to remember, and we don't have the movement to buff on us so we can attack from any range we want and there's no increased damage from moving squares so it does not matter how we move so what i want to do to start is because iris has the karen you want to attack with her or you can attack with her first or you can heal olivier so because olivia does not have max health i do want to heal him up and you can still pro you can still proc karen from a non-attacking turn so because Olivier can do more damage due to his talent and sorceresses, we want to make sure that he's at full health and we can go and attack with Iris next turn. Now, we because we have Javelin with Lanford, normally he can't attack on this turn, but we have a range attack, so he's able to. The only other turns Lanford can attack are when we shove Slepnir away with a smash attack. So now I can go in... We can attack with everyone else. And of course, due to his talent, Leon wants his max move possible. Just increases DPS. And we want to have everybody end their turn, not within any of the up, down, left, or right directions of Slepnir. Otherwise, he will do a auto HK OHKO 5x damage hit on you that absolutely destroys you, so... All right, so the reason why Act Again units are so good on this fight is because they can um, s solo burn off the hunted debuffs off them. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start by moving Iris down here, and we are going to attack with her and hopefully get a Karan proc. All right, so we got a Karan proc. Great. So we can move, aim... And you can see he only has one turn now left, and come back. So now the Hunted debuffs off us, and Slepnir will not attack us this turn, which is fantastic. So I can feel free to just DPS him with the rest of my units. And then because Lanford has the uh, does not have a 
javelin to toss. He is just going to wait. Okay, so this is perfect. Now, Altamiller has gotten uh, hunted, so we need to build a wall around Altamiller. Now, the way the wall works is you want to build... So imagine if Altamiller is the middle of the L. You want to build an L shape with... Or let me turn on the name. Uh, all right, this is better. So we want to build an L shape around here and have the unit we have the L over here. Now, that's not exactly where we want to build the L because we don't want to have three units in a line from Slepnir. So we want to first look at our units move. Now, the unfortunate thing is that Altamiller does not have a great move. So we're going to have to shove Slepnir on this phase. Now, the great thing is that we actually have a perfect spot to move because we can move right here. And I'm just going to take this turn to guard because we have a free turn anyways. So might as well get guard up so we don't have to worry about it later. And what we're going to do is we're going to be smashing Slepnir up with Leon. So first we are going to build the wall around him though. So I can start by having Iris attack and this will form the base of one side of the wall. Next one we're going to do is I'm going to move Luna down here. And we can attack. <clears throat> and I can move again her over here. Uh, now what I'll do is I'll attack with Lanford. And the reason we can attack with Lanford, as I mentioned earlier, is because we will be shoving Slepnir up. So Lanford will no longer be in range to get attacked. Next, what I'll do is I will attack with Olivier. And now what I can do is I can take Leon and we can shove Slepnir up. And actually, this is not good because Leon is mispositioned. So I messed up here. And we need to... Actually, this is, so I did mess up here because I forgot to keep in uh, into consideration where Leon can retreat to after. So what I really should have done is I should have moved Olivier over here and not attack with him and had Leon just end his turn here. But for this purpose, we can actually just leave him right here. And Slepnir will move two squares less than he normally does. Um, actually, he chose to run around the crystals. That is interesting. So, as you can see, he did no damage to Ultimular. So, don't be like me, and make sure that you plan your wall around where your Leon can retreat to after. Um, but that actually ended up really working out. And now we're at the position where we can just DPS him down, and try to um, do as much damage on the stun phase here. So, that's it for the general positioning guide. Um, make sure that you build your walls a little bit better than I do. Uh, but I really appreciate you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate if you could hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell so you get more Ancient Beckoning content like this. And as always, if you guys have any further questions about this fight or comments about the video, uh, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, thank you guys again so much for watching, and I will see you guys soon.